This morning, one of our team had been to a family funeral and she was horrified at the amount of people asking to take away the dead relative's possessions. <laughs> like, whilst in the house at the wake. I mean, <laughs> this has just happened and they're eyeing things up. And one guest even asked to take away the teapot that was being used to pour the tea for the mourners. So, I mean, is this just horrendous behaviour? Is it normal and I just haven't come across that it before? Shocking. <laughs> That's shocking. No, the thing, I am very, very emotional about the things I have from my grandmother, my mother, from Karen, and I wouldn't part with them for anything. But I have to say that in Ireland, the wake is a different kettle of fish altogether because they have a lot of open coffins. There's a lot and, of alcohol. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of alcohol. It's all set, like celebration and so on. And, and this is true. In some cases, they used to stand the coffin in the corner with the person actually looking out and as they were enjoying it. And that is true. And they have a bit of a Kaylee and a bit of a Hooli. However, a fr friend of mine went back a couple of years back because her aunt had died, her mother's sister, and a big, fam big Irish family. And so at the uh, wake and with the open coffin, she heard her mother saying to another sister, Oh, here, she says, isn't that a lovely wee blouse that she's wearing? I wonder where she got that wee blouse. Oh, and, you know, she said it was America that didn't take the blouse off. The person, but, but, you know, but, you know, we could talk about it forever. But, uh, I mean, I, I think it's awful to do it at the wake itself. Mm. I mean, that's really? A step too far. Oh, I don't, sorry. Oh, that sounded really horrible then. <laughs> no, why? Are you, <laughs> no. are you already thinking about the teapot? <laughs> <laughs> I just... I think it's a sensible place to do it. <laughs> Everyone's there. You're safe in time. I'm, I'm assuming that I, anyone... It's not like a house auction. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, a sale of content. No. It's not like one of those just... house clearance things Let where you go around and everything's got a little number Hold on, on a it. Second. <laughs> Hear me out. I... As long as someone's had a wonderful long life, you know, and then you, all your friends and family get together, I'm assuming no, no one at the wake is there who doesn't really know them that well, otherwise what are they doing there? Why not say, oh, I love that, could I... If they're not, you know, where were you going to do with it? Could you not take, take it the it next day, you? or the next day, or two days later, maybe? But how, how long do you leave it, then, before you knock on the door and go, <laughs> I've been thinking about that teapot that you <laughs> served me on the way. Can I have it? I, I remember my auntie Jeffries, and I loved her so much. Every time I went to her house, that she had these little china cats, and I was so obsessed with them and besotted by them. When she passed away, she was really old and had a lovely life, and, it, you know, the, the way that you'd want to go. When she passed away and we were at her... Wake, I, I don't know if you yeah. call it a well, shiver, whatever. Um, that's the first thing I said to my mum was, Mum, where's the cats? Can I have them? <laughs> <laughs> where's the china cats? Who's got the china cats? Well, I, I was devastated Auntie Jeffries are gone. Yeah, but I, I, I was still love the cats. cats. I just, I'm going to shut up. When my Welsh granny died, um, I remember I was doing a radio show and uh, every day, and I said to my mum, Can I come to the funeral? It was in North Wales, and then they were going to have the wake up her house, and she went, well, no, you can't come because you don't speak Welsh. It's in <laughs> oh, Welsh. Dear. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Janet, oh, know. you're reacting like a normal person. My mother said, no, you can't come, full stop. <laughs> so the next thing I said was, well, if I'm not coming to the funeral, can I have that cat? <laughs> That's in her house Was with it a toothache. China cat? A China cat with toothache. It's <laughs> gross. But I absolutely got fixated on that China cat. I've got a question to ask you. What? May I have your handbags when you snuff it? No, I already, well, asked, I already asked Janet. You know this. I get first I, I know I want her handbags. Right, well, you can all just hold your horses. Number one, <laughs> even though I'm not taking Gloria's lorry load of pills, I am going to live to be 100. <laughs> and number two, when I go, there is going to be no funeral. <laughs> One oh. day I'll be here, the next day I'll be incinerated, and then I'm going to have a party. It's in my will. Massive party. Play your cards for out. You can get invited. Now, <laughs> I don't, now I don't want the clothes. I just don't want you to go anywhere. No. <laughs> don't go anywhere, did, ever. Did you get the cat? Stay. I have got the China cat with the toothache. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I bet people watching this programme, that was a really popular thing in the 1950s, mm. these hideous China cats. How did you know it had a toothache? Because it's China. You because it's got it. a China bandage round oh. its head. Oh. And it's got a funny, really crotchety expression. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of my mother. <laughs> <laughs>